<laughs> Good evening. Praise the Lord, everybody. They caught me off guard just a little bit. I I get you off guard. Yes, <laughs> working right up until the very minute we go live. So. Good evening and good evening, Apostle. Good evening, Lady Rhonda Deloach. Yes. Welcome to Worship and Word, our Sunday evening teaching segment. And so we're just so delighted to have you with us. We're uh, glad to be back. We weren't here last Sunday. Yes. We were celebrating with uh, an apostle friend of ours yes. as they were celebrating their um, ministry anniversary second in that year. particular building. Ooh, but sorry. now she's been in ministry way longer yes, than that. Yes. And so we're talking about our good friend, Apostle uh, Shalar Hatton. Yes. And so wanted want to give a shout out to her right now. Yes, That's indeed. True. And say to all of you all, um, greetings. Good evening, Julie. Greetings to everybody who who's coming on. We're uh, excited about what God is saying, what he is doing. God is always doing something. He's mm -hmm. always saying something. And so that's why uh, it never gets boring. It never gets stale um, yeah. coming before the Lord and then sharing with what he has said uh, with you all and his people. Um, uh, anything you want to add before we go to some announcements? Yeah, just um, in regard to celebration last Sunday evening, mm -hmm. uh, and have great time. Fellowship was great. Uh, yes, God it has was. ordained the fellowship. Yes. If we would see in the scriptures in Acts how that um, they, you know, shared and broke bread daily. That's right. They had all things coming. And where there is fellowship, two are better than one. Yes. There's an extra amount of strength that you receive in the fellowship. And the Bible said they continued daily. Yes. Steadfastly in prayers. Mm -hmm. That's all that, that always comes up first. Prayers and in. Um, breaking a bread. Breaking a bread. Yes. And in fellowship. Amen. That's a corporate expression that's greater than any individual expression. Uh, when I talk about the Acts Church, I use the uh, acronym WIFE. Mm -hmm. You know, um, W I F E. Yeah. And, and the Bible talks about that. The church is the bride of Christ. This is true. Wife, what, the, what do the words of the acronym of the letter stand for? Uh, y, W is for worship. Yes. When they came together, they spent time together in yes. worship. That's right. And in corporate in worship. Corporate worship, mm -hmm. which is stronger than your individual worship. This is true. More is released when people come together. Yes. And numbers, if any two of you yes. shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. Yes. It shall be done. Mm -hmm. of our father is going to be done. Amen. Amen. So it is corporate. And then the word, the letter I is for intercession. They came together and they began to pray together. And then uh, uh, F is fellowship. Yes. And E is for expression. So that was the corporate expression of what they had on the inside of them. Absolutely. Amen. 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 So I want to invite everybody to, sh to share to tag, come on in. We've got a lot to say. Amen. Yes, amen. And we're going to say it, and hopefully, in not a long time, strong, not long, um, and let the word of God begin to bless you wherever you are. Amen. Oh, Reba Pearl, my, I, I like to call her my homegirl, went to college in my hometown. All right. And she's my sister. We, My mom took care of her. Uh, when she was going to college. Hi, Reba. Good to see you. Amen. Amen. Good evening. Tell somebody else that the, the apostle is on. Amen. Amen. And we're going to do some warfare apparently today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, that's it. And we want to uh, get in a few announcements. And uh, oh, well, that's going to be in the announcements. I'm so excited. I don't want to give it away. Well, go ahead. And, and um, we'll just segue into it if we, you want to begin with that we, one. we talked about years uh celebrating um two years in their facility they're building and when people get acquisition we like to celebrate with them because yes. acquisition is part of our vision to yes. acquire yes. land and properties and yes. holdings so that what we can establish the kingdom of god in a certain area that's right a locality amen a location amen. and but yet our friend apostle Hatton has been in ministry for years. Yes. I preached, I preached uh, in her services 
at many different locations while they were tabernacling. Yes. And what is tabernacling, sweet? It's going from place to place. Yes. Uh, before you come to a place of uh, stability or a place that you call your own. Amen. Amen. And that's what the children, uh, children of Israel did when they were in the wilderness. They set up the tabernacle. And when God, uh, the cloud lifted off of the tent, it was time to move. So yes. they would move to another location. Mm -hmm. They would set up shop so to speak, and they would set up the tabernacle. And then when uh, God's uh, cloud would descend upon the tent, a meeting, and then when the tent uh, or the cloud lifted, move again. Move. And so mm -hmm. moving, but yet still ministering mm -hmm. at the same time to the Lord. Yes. And so, yes, tabernacling. Right. So then I likewise, and we likewise have spent years in ministry. Oh, yes. And we are excited Yes. Um, don't regret one day. Amen. Amen. Um, it is God who calls men and set men in the body. Yes. As it pleases him, not as it pleases them. That's right. Amen. There are certain people who think they uh, uh, know where you belong and what you should be doing. But it's God, people of God. 48 years, sweetheart. Ooh. The big 4-8. We're going to be celebrating 48 years of ministry in this month, Sister Reba, and I sure hope you can come. It's going to be the 27th of this month, which is the fourth Sunday. We like to put emphasis on the fourth Sunday. Yes, because sometimes people don't remember the date per se. Mm -hmm. But if you say the fourth Sunday, then they, they know, okay, yeah. the fourth Sunday, um, someone's having some. It's e easier to remember. Mm -hmm. And at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, we're going to be celebrating uh, 48 years in ministry and celebrate uh, means that, you know, that's a triumph. You triumph. A triumph is a celebration of a victory that's won to have come through those 48 years. Yes. To have uh, surrendered our lives in obedience to the will and the ways of God for us. Yes. That's a victory. Amen. That is definitely a triumph. Amen. Amen. So we praise God for his goodness unto us. Amen. Amen. We praise God for all the things that he has done for us. Praise God. So people are going to be coming. Yes. Uh, sons and daughters who are uh, spiritual sons and daughters uh, of my ministry who have been influenced. They're coming from different states. Yes. Want everybody, a uh, uh, fivefold ministry uh, people, pastors, apostles, prophets, teachers, uh, amen, and pastors in the local area are going to be coming. Yes. And it's going to be a great time of celebration. So we want you to come and join in. It's all about the Lord. Yes. It's not about uh, Gary and Rhonda. No. It's about the Lord because he's yes. the one that's given us the grace to be able to do these years. Amen. Amen. And you, and you said Gary and Rhonda. I'm yes. going to tell you, I, obviously, I have not been with the ministry 48 years. <laughs> But I'm attached to my sweetheart. Amen. And so uh, we have been working um, together just with Praise Center Church for All Nations uh, about 21 years. Amen. 21 years as, no, excuse me, 22 years as of this past February or going in. No, you're right. 21 years. Amen. I hadn't been there. I, I didn't come uh, on the ground floor, but I did come just a few months later. And so just in uh, even a couple of years mm -hmm. before then, a year or two before then, you were coming to my former ministry. Yes. Yes. And then I had to do what you often do. Uh, you would pull some singers when your singers couldn't be with you. You yes. would pull some singers to be with you. And so been ministering with this man for many, many years, mm -hmm. probably about 24 years. So about half of that. <laughs> yes, about yes. half of that. So, but it's going to be a great celebration. Uh, and uh, just as you were saying, a lot of times... Um, the emphasis uh, tends to be more on the man and woman, which is what happens when you're honoring someone. Well, we we oh. tend to do it just a little bit different because we want it to be just a, a pretty much a, a praise and worship celebration, mm -hmm. celebrating God, even as we're being honored. Mm -hmm. And so just want to say that something happens 
when uh, we come together to praise and worship the oh, Lord. So we, we have that Second Chronicles 5 working mm, when uh, we have that. different people coming. And the good thing is they uh, we don't have people that are coming, they're stiff necked or uh, excuse me, stiff shirt. Uh, stiff yeah, collar, yeah. uh, people come in and they're ready, ready to, to come in into the presence of the Lord. And so everyone has this air of expectation to be in the presence of God. And so God shows up in such a big way. So we just want to invite you guys to come in to this wonderful celebration. Matter of fact, one of our missions and assignments is to gather the worshipers. Yes. So that so there'd be an in gathering of worshipers to get God's assignment done. And worship and praise entail so many things. So as true. I, as I said this morning, you know, it's not just empty words. Right. It's not an empty thing that God tells us to do. He inhabits. He's inside. Yes, he is. He places himself inside our worship. Yes. His spirit is in our worship. And purpose, oh, we could preach about that all night. Purpose mm -hmm. is resident within a man, the things that he's assigned us to do. Mm -hmm. So that we're not just dancing. There's a spiritual process going on when we're dancing. Right. We're trampling the enemy under our feet. Yes. In the spirit. That's what's going on in the spirit. We're not shouting just to, to hear ourselves shout and see how loud we can get. In shouting, that word shout is a word uh, in the Hebrew that means to mar the kingdom of the enemy. Yes. Come on. We, we, we provoke fear. We uh, make him fear. When he hears the sounds of the praises of the saints. Yes. Uh, in the Bible. Folk begin to fear and get up and run. That's right. So there's so many things that goes on there. Mm -hmm. And then we thank God. The Bible does say, uh, you know, muzzle not the ox that traded out the corn. So ce celebration of leadership, mm -hmm. celebration and honor is legitimate. It is. Amen. In the scripture, we thank God for those who have honored us in past years. We thank God for those, even the members of Praise Center Church. I like to call them the praise centenarians yes. who honor us as their leaders yes. and they submit themselves. Amen. Amen. And those, that's what we're called to do, to sub, you know, know those who labor among you that's exactly and right. submit yourself to them. Yes. Because guess what? When you submit yourself to leadership, mm -hmm. the blessings of leadership come upon you. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we're ready to get on and uh, get a few more announcements so we can chuck in this juicy word tonight. All right. So then we want to always um, tell you about the family prayer revival yes. that we have every single Thursday night. It happens on our conference line. And all you have to do is call that number, enter that access code, and you will be brought into our family prayer revival. What is that? It is a time of prayer where, we're, mm -hmm. where we are praying for families, not just in Little Rock, not just That's in true. Arkansas, not just even in the United States, but all over the world. Yes. We're praying for families. And I like to say often, as Satan is targeting families, we are targeting yeah, families mm -hmm. in prayer to uh, cancel out the assignments um, that Satan has against not just God's people, mm -hmm. but people everywhere. Mm -hmm. Those who shall be, the word says, the heirs of yes, salvation. So we're prayer. We're uh, praying rather for everyone, for marriages, for um, um, relationships, whether it's parent children relationships all different types of family relationships. So mm -hmm. we invite you to join us. We're not going to ask you to pray. So don't get um, intimidated by like, right. they may call on me. We won't call on you. We have designated people who already pray, but we do ask you to come in and agree with us mm -hmm. in prayer. Amen. So you, know, you said something that I just want to kind of jump in on. Please. Um, those who are becoming, who shall become mm -hmm. the heirs of salvation. Uh, that's why we should never give up on anybody. That's right. Uh, be it your loved ones or people outside um, of the faith of the covenant. Yes. We pray for them. That's right. That's why it's good to have a list to pray for people. Jesus, well, the Lord says to the apostles, I think it was a, uh, Apostle Paul, I would that, you know, uh, we, you know, pray for all men. Yes. We got to pray for everybody. Come on. Yes. Pray for kings. That's right. Leaders and rulers of nations. That's right. Because he is not willing that any should perish but all come to repentance. Oh, he, he, he wants the most uh, incorrigible, the most 
uh, unlikely person, yes. the one who's steeped deep and embedded in sinful practices. Yes. He wants that one to be saved. Yes. So when people have written them off, he says, we ought to pray for them because they are in the process, listen, of becoming. Yes, they are. Peter, Satan desires to have you yes. and to sift you as sweet. Yes. But I have prayed for you mm -hmm. that your faith fails not. Not to worry. There's enough prayers going up for you that I'm confident you are going to change me. Yes. <laughs> and re related, the, uh, I know you, I know you got something. Um, <laughs> uh, there was a man who was of German descent who was a great believer that I read about the history that uh, George uh, Mueller, George Mueller, and uh, the story has it that he prayed for a friend for 63 years to be saved. That's a long time. Now that's sticking to it. Yes. That's being faithful. And he had such confidence that the man would be saved. He made the statement before he left this earth. He says, I've been praying for 63 years for my friend to be saved. He's not now, but he shall be saved. How else can it be? Yes. For I am praying. Yes. He had enough confidence in his own prayers. First, first, uh, um, what is it? First John 5, 14. And this is the confidence. Yes. That we have in him. Yes. That if we ask anything according to his will, we know God hears us. Yes. And if he hears us, we have the petitions that we offered up unto him. So 63 years uh, amen. And the man died. Mr. Mueller died. Yes. And guess what? When they're lowering his body down in the grave, his friend was there at the grave site. Awesome. And began to speak up and ask for prayer to be saved. I want to be saved. Yes. And go to heaven like my friend is. I believe he didn't want to be separated from his friend. Oh, isn't that something? Isn't that <laughs> yes, something? Yes. It wow. is. That's what an impact he must have had on his friend's life. Evidently. Yes. And I also wanted to add more and more person. A lot of times we think only outside the body of Christ, but even inside the body of Christ, even as you were talking about Peter, mm -hmm. but look at uh, Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus was one who was, he was a religious person yes. persecuting the mm -hmm. Acts church, but look at what God did in transforming him. Mm -hmm. He, um, he was one that was holding one of the coats of the people who were stoning Stephen. the deacon Stephen. Stephen yeah. And so he was really um, gung-ho and very passionate about that. God used that passion, mm -hmm. turned it around and used it for good. People who are out there that are in the world and they're, uh, like you said, steeped in sin, they're passionate about yes. it. God wants to take those very ones and take that same passion and me. use it for himself, use it to in, uh, the, kingdom. in mm -hmm. the kingdom of mm -hmm. God to help expand the kingdom. Because look at who wrote two thirds of the New Testament. Same this man. same Saul of Tarsus, whose name got changed to Paul. And so God wants to use, He has a plan to use all of us. Did he write the song? I know I've been changed. No, he didn't. I wrote all of these. He didn't need to write that song, but I believe it applies. Yes. So just a few more announcements or, uh, or you have anything else you want to add? Before no, speak, just a few more announcements. Okay. So then we have the family prayer revival. Mm -hmm. That's your open invitation right there for you to come and join us. Also, we have um, during the family prayer revival, we also take live prayer requests. So mm -hmm. if you want to come on and you have a, a request for yourself or you have one for someone you know, we um, we take those at that time and we pray together for that person. And I want to also give you an opportunity ahead of time. If you want to send a prayer request or a praise report, you can call us yes. and, or you can email us. That information is right there on the screen. And also just want to let you know of some other teaching times we have, just in case uh, you're enjoying the teaching on tonight. Worship and Word, this happens usually every Sunday evening at 6.30, unless we're going to fellowship with somebody That's else. Right. And then during the week, we have morning manifestations with my sweetheart, Apostle Gary Deloach, at 10 a.m. And you can spend your... Um, your break time with him or lunch break. If you take a very early lunch there, I like to listen because I'm working, but 
and can't come in as much as I would like to, but it is a wonderful time of teaching. Also, you say, hey, I'd like to get in on some old teachings. You got YouTube channel, Gary Deloach Ministries. You just go to YouTube, mm -hmm. type in Gary Deloach Ministries. You will see all of those teachings, even our kingdom worship um, conference that we had on last year yes. is very powerful. Uh, and if you like to go and listen to some of those um, services and teachings that we had on Saturday, you'll find that there as well. Also, we'd like to uh, give people opportunity to give because that's how you partner with us and not help us because obviously this is free. God is awesome, isn't he? Mm -hmm. yes. It has this uh, where a lot of people can go out and minister. And um, but we have ministry, obviously, Praise Center Church for All Nations. And this is how you can sow into not just that ministry, but into this ministry here, this uh, 48 um, uh, years 48, of ministry. He's about to say 48 year old man. Uh, <laughs> 48 years of ministry. Um, and so into the work that God is doing to help it uh, perpetuate. And also, those are the two ways that we uh, offer online that you can give. If you would like to give through the mail, that's where you can send it. Praise Center Church, there's a P.O. box right there. And if I'm going a little too fast, you can go to the YouTube channel and go back and you can get all of this information. And just one last thing before we jump in tonight. Happy birthday, March yes, birthday. Happy birthday. All of you enjoy this month of yes. March. Amen. Amen. We're big on celebrating even birthdays. So just want to wish you a happy birthday. And now want to get to the word of God, which is why you're here. So please oh, take it away, Apostle. All right. Well, we'll take it away and we're going to teach the word. Welcome those of you who have joined during the time of announcement. So I want you to do again. I want you to, to tag someone to uh, share. Yes. Amen. Tag and share. Reach out to someone. You can uh, so let's get together. Let's have a watch party. Let's just get in and let's just begin to listen to the scriptures together. Yes. Somebody may be over oversleeping during their Sunday evening nap, mm -hmm. which we were blessed to have one. Ooh. Thank God for the alarm clock. Hallelujah. The clock said, wake us up. And then I had one in my spirit that won't be up before my sweetheart did. Yay. So we're just thankful for all of you. We, we, we have something to say out of the word. Yes. And when we come forward, we ask God to rebuke our own ideas, yes. our own intellect. Uh, you know, it's no good to try to explain the scriptures out of your own intellect. That's right. Through the wisdom and the understanding of the spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So once we are in the counsel of God, we, we come to know the ways of God and we yes. listen for rightly right interpretation. Yes. Paul told Timothy, he says, study. Yes. Study to show yourself. That's right. And to show yourself approved we need god's approval yes amen i'm not looking for amen. man's approval no i'm not looking to hear men say doc you preached you know doc that was deep uh, uh apostle that was heavy now did you see jesus right did you hear did the will of god come forth as i ministered to you did the word of god from the logos become rhema Yes. Was it translated into rhema, which is a right now, a word quickened mm -hmm. in your spirit to cause change or cause you to embrace the will of purpose? Purpose is a big thing. Yes. We're all called for purpose. We're called here. We're here for purpose. What is my purpose? So when in, in our preaching and our teaching, it should begin to awaken Yes. To stir purpose yes. in our lives yes. so that we can do this thing of, of covenant life better. Yes. So that we can have the victories that we're supposed to have. But That's more right. than that, to do the will of God in the earth. Yes. Because we are his ambassadors. Yes, we are. We are his ambassadors. We are the ones that he's called to spread his kingdom, his name oh, yes. in the earth. So yes. yes, so we ask the Lord to uh, rebuke our own ideas. And Paul tells Timothy, mm -hmm. study of why, show yourself approved, uh, workman that needs not to be ashamed, but made ashamed, doing what? Rightly, Rightly dividing the dividing word of truth. Dividing 
the word of truth. And when it's rightly divided, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little, mm -hmm. my God, what about, what an understanding. And when people are walking in understanding of the ways, we do the ways. That's right. That's uh, that's my one of my favorite scriptures. Psalm uh, 111, on. 10, the B clause, a good understanding uh, have all they that do the commandments. So people who do the commandments, it's because they have a good understanding. Mm -hmm. They have a good understanding. Yes. And those that love the law of God, they operate. Happy is he. Hmm? We talk about the vision. Yes. Without a vision, men perish. Yes. But happy is he yes, that, that keeps, keeps the, the law. law. That's right. So, sweetheart, I'm there to talk about standing tonight. All right. Amen. Well, continue. We've been sharing some, some uh, nuggets about stand. We're in, a, we're in a time, we're in a dispensation where there are all kinds of challenges, yes. all kinds of temptations. We're, we're looking face to face. We've come face to face with what Jesus called the this kind, mm -hmm. this kind going not out. Yes. Uh, we've come to the time of this kind of, we're dealing with spirits. We're dealing yes. with uh, all kinds of attacks from the enemy. Yes. The onslaught from the enemy to come to discourage. Mm -hmm. You're standing in the Lord and who's standing? In Malachi, the, the word talks about, you know, when the day of the Lord comes, who shall be able to stand? That's right. For he has come in the Lord himself as the refiner's fire. Yes. Who's, who's going to be left standing? You know, a lot of times, you know, we talk about when, um, you know, the battle is, is on. Mm -hmm. Who's going to be left standing? The strong. Yes. It's been said that the strong survive. Preached okay. a message years ago yes. that we need, we need um, uh, revival for survival. Mm -hmm. We need to have the word. You, you ready? You got something? Oh, no. <laughs> but uh, after the die is cast, after all these things have come, who's left standing? Yes. And the Lord employs us to stand, having our uh, armor completely on because you're going to be tested. The church is being shaken. Yes. The body is being shaken. Yes. For the sake of awakening to who we are in purpose. That's right. And that means God has given us something. He, he wouldn't tell us to stand. He'd be a, he wouldn't be a good God. No. He wouldn't be a good God if he tells us all these things and then not tell us how. Yes. If he tells us to stand and then tell us or give us something to stand with. Or he tells us to fight, as Paul tells Timothy, uh, fight the good fight of faith. Timothy, yes. yes, lay hold upon eternal life. No, mm -hmm. seize the opportunity yes. to get the victory. If he didn't tell him how to fight that good fight, amen. And talks about warfare. No man that warreth entangles himself yes. with the affairs of this life. Yes. So the affairs of this life, if we're not mindful, can cause us to forget what we have been empowered with to fight when the enemy comes to attack us. Yes. Amen. And Amen. then we have something to properly defend ourselves. That's right. And you were saying that if he didn't tell us how to do it, mm -hmm. how uh, unfair that would be. Yes. Uh, uh, give us instruction, but that, uh, doesn't give us how to do what he's asked us to do. Doesn't equip us to do mm -hmm. what he's asked us to do. But we don't serve an unfair God. We serve a mm, just God a just who God. makes sure that whatever he calls us to do or tells us to do, that he gives us exactly what we need in order to do it. Mm. And, and when we face any resistance, how to overcome it. I'm telling you, I'm getting some, some, some nuggets for my own life, even as we're talking. Come on, come on. <laughs> and yeah. so that's what God does. That's who he is. He is just. And he wants to constantly remind us, listen, in your regular everyday affairs, apply the word of God. Get into the secret place. Get my instruction. In the secret place. Because in the secret place, he'll take us up and give us an aerial view of mm. what really is happening. Yes. Because a lot of times we only see in the natural what's happening, but we do not see what's happening in the realm of the spirit, how Satan has set 
uh, certain traps for us or he how he is attacking different ways. And God says, let me show you what the, uh, his strategy is and let me give you a strategy to overcome him. Mm -hmm. And so this is why it's important. Mm -hmm. to get into that place where we hear those instructions and how God wants to do it so that we can, like our elder brother Jesus, mm -hmm. be victorious. Here you give I like your phrases tonight. You, you, you're getting in my soup. I'm getting, getting in my soup. Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy right. Spirit. Well, she was talking about that so that we can have a strategy. Mm -hmm. We're no match for the enemy in our flesh. No. Amen. Amen. Now, you may have been a great problem solver, but in the kingdom, it's a spiritual battle going yes. on. Saying the song, there's a war going on. And if you're going to win, yes, uh, I don't remember the other words, but if you're going to win, you're going to have to have um, the word of God deep down within. Yes. That's what's going to cause you to win the battle. I want to read this right quick. It's not my holding scripture, but while you were talking, and I, I love these kind of sessions where the spirit of God is allowed to have his way. Yes. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, amen. Amen. Um, praise God. Um, the night verse, but as it is written, mm -hmm. Jesus always used that when the enemy came against him in the wilderness. And notice how he stood. Uh, I want somebody to put up in, in all caps, S-T-A-N-D, stand. All right. I want you to help us preach tonight. Someone needs to hear the word stand. Someone's yes. on the verge, perhaps, of giving up. Yes. I'm talking about a believer in covenant. Yes. Uh, a believer who's unbelieving. Yes. Amen. Who, Amen. Who has seen some blessings, who has seen the Lord perhaps do some things, but mm -hmm. can't bring yourself to believe totally and stand on to your own hurt. What the, the uh, swear to your own hurt, Psalm 15, which we'll get in later. And uh, but you, and change not. And change not. Don't change. Mm -hmm. Come on. Uh, as as uh, Ezra said, when the mm -hmm. king, it was time for them to leave, they're leaving. And the king said, let, let me send you some help. Let me send you some protection. You you will come under attack possibly. That's a bad road. That's yes. a cutthroat road of thieves and robbers. Let me send you some soldiers. And guess what the man of God had the audacity and the nerve to say? Let me say the, the audacity and faith. Mm -hmm. He said, no, we don't need your help. Thank you, sir. He said, for you know, we said our God will deliver us, and that's our only expectation. Wow. Yes. We don't, you know, thank you. That's right. But he, we said that our God is going to be our protection on the way. That's right. Along the way. Yes. <laughs> He's going to be our defense. Yes. Somebody help me say along the way. Along the way. Stand. Stand. After you've done all you can. Yes. What do you do when you've given your all and your all never seems to be enough? You just stand yes. Come on, when there's nothing left to do. But Ezra said, no, we seek of him a right way for us. Yes. And he will protect us. That's standing. Yes. That's believing with your whole heart. Come yes. on. That's standing on the word of God. And you know what? God will not let us stand like that and That's not right. come through for us because right. his word cannot lie. So then uh, in... Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. The 10th verse says, but God. Yes. But God. Somebody said, but God. But God. Has revealed them unto us how? By his spirit. By his spirit. Certain things we don't get a, a view of. Certain things we don't have the strategy. We don't have how we are going to overcome it. We don't know. Come on. Yes. Uh, we we got to own up to some things in our flesh. The flesh is uh, full of pride. Yes, it is. The flesh will cause us to act like we know something when we really don't know. Sweetheart, you know, uh, many of us have been guilty of that. You know, mom used to tell us the best thing to do. If somebody asks you a question that you don't have the answer to, just say you don't you don't know. Just say you don't have just the answer. Just say you don't have the answer. And that you'll get the answer. Come on. And don't, 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 don't pretend. Don't fake it. Yes. Come on. Don't fake the enemy knows the fakers oh, from yes. those who are real. That's right. Just ask the seven sons of Siva or Skiva. 
they in the Acts, the Bible says, I thought I wanted to go read that, but I don't think I do. I just want to quote that. Mm -hmm. Amen. But the Bible said they're trying to do practice exorcism. Yes. In a name that they don't even, they're not even familiar with. Yes. There are people that may serve the, may say they're serving the Lord. They're going to church sometimes, or they're going to church some every Sunday. They may be going every Sunday, but don't know the Lord because they are not standing with and using the armor that God has given us to stand with. Yes. And prayer is at the top of that yes. list. And with all the gospel is there that we can have intimacy with Him, but they're not able to overcome the evil one because they don't know, they don't have the knowledge. And here the seven sons of Siva trying to go before the enemy and says, you know, we cast you out in the name of Jesus and in the name of Paul, in the name of- and In the name of Jesus whom Paul whom preaches. Paul preached. So they, look at, look, <laughs> they're going through channels, trying to cast out, we cast you out in the name of Jesus, who Paul preached. Mm -hmm. We ain't preaching him, no. but Paul preached him. Come on, yes. sweetheart. They knew his name. They knew the name of Jesus, yes, they but they did not know the person mm -hmm. of Jesus. So they That's didn't have the authority to use the name. Mm -hmm. See, when I know a person, uh -huh. I can go in someone else's name when I know that person and they've given me authority well, to use yes. their name. I can't go in somebody else's name mm -hmm. and they've not given me access or authority to use their name yes. because if they call the person and say, hey, I don't know that person. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to be made ashamed. And that's exactly mm -hmm. what happened with the seven sons. Yes, they were made ashamed because they did not know the person. They that's were it. not authorized by Jesus to use his name. Therefore, when they tried to use it, um, uh, Satan, so to speak, and the devils uh, they were dealing with got on the phone. It's like, hey, did you authorize them? He's like, listen, <laughs> he's like, no, I don't know them. Don't know. Oh, and they're like, that's all we need to know. Jumped on. Jumped on them. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, of course, I'm, I'm kind of characterizing it and uh, paraphrasing it. But at the same time, we need to know the person of mm -hmm. Jesus. Be intimate with yes. him. Have a personal relationship and not just know about, oh, him, about him, but to know him. Yes. Not about him, but to know him. Amen. People yes. singing about him, but not singing to him. Mm -hmm. That's a difference. Yes. You know him. And I, I can I can hear now that message that the late outstanding man of God out of Chicago, Illinois, the late R D Apostle R D Hinton, yes. preached a message that I'll never forget. You've been deputized. You've been authorized by the Lord to cast out devil. But if you don't know the name, oh, he could use that for. If you don't know the name, you ain't got no authority. Mm -hmm. When you know the name, that person whose name you use has given you permission That's right. to use his name. Sometimes you can go to the bank and somebody says, I just want you to take this note yes. and show it to the banker. Yes. You know, it ain't, you are, you're not receiving the benefit on your name at all. That's right. It's totally on that person's somebody name else's because name. they have credit and clout. Yes. They have influence. Yes. And that's the same thing with the Lord. That's so right. this is what I'm finishing this up. It says, we're back in um, First, First Corinthians, Corinthians 2. He says, uh, I have not seen, but God has revealed these things unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Yes. How are we going to know? Get into the spirit of God. Get into yes. the presence because it searches the deep things of God. Yes. How are we going to get these strategies? Yes. In the presence of God. That's How right. are we going to get these strategies? In prayer, because yes. without prayer, come on, we are weak. If we don't have yes. a prayer life every day, we're going to see it later. Yes. Every day, it ain't every now and then. You don't get to skip out on this. That's right. You don't get to clap out on this. That's right. You don't get to say what I feel like and I'm going to do it. Guess what? The enemy eats your lunch. Yes. He will eat your lunch. That's he true. will come on. He will override who you are. He will disregard you just like he disregarded the seven sons. Of Skiba, who did not even yes. know the name. Yes. He just knew that Paul, they just knew that they knew Paul, the name. They knew the name, but they, but didn't, they, know were, the they, were, they didn't know the person. Yes. They in other words, a, they were not in relationship. That's right. Mm -hmm. You can know somebody, 
mm -hmm. my name that's in your neighborhood. Yes. Speak to them yes. occasionally. Yes. But you don't know them experientially. So consequently, you don't really know anything about them. Yes. You just know, oh, there go Mr. John. Yeah. Amen. So then there, the spirit searches the deep things of God. For which, for what man knoweth the things of man, save or accept the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Yes. Now we have received the spirit, not the spirit of the world. Listen at this. We don't operate in. Yes. When we came into covenant with Jesus, we didn't receive the spirit of the world. We abandoned that spirit. That's it. So we're not in the world. Say, I'm not in the world. I'm not in the I'm world. I'm operating in what I knew when I was in the world. Now, now I'm operating on a whole different system now. Yes. I'm operating according to a whole different set of laws. Yes. They're spiritual laws. Amen. Yes. Amen. Lord, that's, that's how I'm identified. That old me, that old Adamic nature. That old man yes. is not operated, God, no. because I wouldn't have any victory if I'm still trying to operate. That's why we have to understand once we come, we have to lose ourselves. That's right. There are things we lose and we don't use that anymore. No. Come on, somebody. Yes. And may have gotten you a little favor with some folks, but in the kingdom and where warfare is concerned, yes. that is not going to work. Yes, but God says, he says here, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Yes. That we might know the things that are freely given to us. Mm -hmm. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man. Yes. Receive it, not what we are. The things, things of the spirit of God. You can receive it in your natural. No. You can receive it in yourself. For they are foolishness unto him. And, yes, right. And neither can he know them because what? They are spiritually discerned. You get it by the spirit. That's right. You wonder sometimes why others overcome and why others are so strong and certain. They're getting it by the spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. By the spirit, because they're spiritually discerned. But they they but he that is spiritual, I didn't skip the natural man now receive. For they are foolishness on him. Neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. For who has known the mind of Christ? Who? Who knows the mind of Christ? Who has known? Here's your answer. That he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. Yes. Who's known the mind of Christ that we can instruct Christ to come to our rescue and do something for him? We have the mind of Christ. We got it. Because we have the Spirit of God operating in us, yes. And when we're spiritually discerning what the uh, God is saying through Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. then we have the mind of Christ. All right. Yes. So let's rush on now. Okay. Sixth chapter of Ephesians. Stand. Yeah. And I wanted to preface that um, this by talking about how that we get the ability to stand in yes. the spirit realm. Come on. Amen. We are called. With spirit beings, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And we we spirit touching spirit, amen. Amen. When you say we're spirit beings, a lot of times we think that this is us, uh, this this um, flesh. But quite honestly, it's just a house for the spirit. Mm -hmm. Somebody has not heard that before. We are spirit beings. We're the essence of who we are. Really, is spirit. We have a soul. And we and that spirit and soul lives in this body. Yeah. And so that's when when he says spirit being, that's what he means. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We are not of this world. Yes. Is that right? Amen. Ephesians sixth chapter. And we're gonna start um Amen. The eleventh verse. Uh, the tempers. Finally, my brethren, be what? Strong, strong in, in the Lord. Lord. Mm -hmm. Be strong and in the power of his might. How are we call to be strong in the Lord? In the power of his might. Mm -hmm. Joshua was exhorted by God when Moses had died. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Only go forth and take this people over. Only be strong and courageous. Yes. Hallelujah. Go not to the left nor to the right, but stay in my word 
and you shall have make your way prosperous mm -hmm. and you shall have good success. Mm -hmm. You're going to be strong by using my word yes. and making it applicable to your life. Amen. Amen. You're going to be strong. I'm looking at you in this screen by making the word of God applicable to your life. Be strong in the Lord. Yes, I'm noticing as you saying to be strong in two things. Mm -hmm. Be strong, number one, in, in the, the Lord, Lord, and then also be strong in the power of his might. Mm -hmm. Strong in the Lord, strong relationship with God, yes. and then strong in, in power. And strong in power. Sometimes um, we can be strong in relationship, but not strong in power. Oh, now you're going to make me say something. That's good. Strong in the Lord. Yes. We talked about knowing this person. Yes. See, knowing this person, that means your relationship. Yes. You know, I'm strong in my relationship with you. Yes. I know you. I'm still learning more. About yes. Seven years we've been together. Yes. I'm still learning new things. Yes. I'm still learning new things about myself. Yes. My skills, developing new oh, skills. Oh, I see where this is going. <laughs> no, you <don't. laughs> Developing, you know, I'm, come on now. I've been preaching. I'm a musician. You know, you're a minstrel. I'm a minstrel and a musician. The Bible speaks of both. Yes. But, uh, you know, my, I hang my head on the fact that I'm a minstrel. Yes. A minstrel has his ear on the mouth of God so that he can play melodies from heaven. Yes. Play God's heart strings. Yes. A lot of people just play yes. and they don't always hear the melodies of heaven. Yes. I hang my head on the fact that I'm a psalmist that have my ears. Uh, ear on the mouth of God yes. and I sing mm -hmm. melodies I sing yes. out of the counsel of God yes. I sing the will of God yes. not just a song but the song of the Lord yes. I do all of that but yes. I'm discovering different skills mm -hmm. skills like what? you see you're baiting me you <laughs> Uh, you know I'm a baker, you know. Yes, my sweetheart uh, is a terrific and awesome baker and, and it's not about his business but amen. but you you just discovered you just discovered something about yourself that you also um now into getting more into just cooking. Wait, wait, wait. Yes. Wait. Is that or what are you trying to, you know, you're trying to open up a new channel? No, I'm not. I'm just saying uh <laughs> let sure. another man praise you. Yes. And uh, he's been uh experimenting with cooking mm -hmm. more so than just baking. Right. And he's found out more things about himself mm -hmm. that he didn't think he could do. So being strong in the Lord. I'm discovering things that in this relationship that are so beneficial for the both of us. Yes. But for me, the more you are strong in the Lord, see, you're not just passive in your relationship. Mm -hmm. Too many people in the body of Christ have become passive and casual. Yes. You know, well, I do it at my own speed. I'll do it at my own. No, some things are urgent. If God is calling you, mm -hmm. get up out of that bed. Yes. If God is calling you to early morning prayer, get up. If God is calling you over in the night, come on. There have been times when I, I haven't had much rest, but once I hit that bed and uh, the spirit is on me and start speaking in tongues, I got to get up. Amen. I got to get up because the Lord is calling me. Right. Little Samuel, uh, yes. uh, Eli said, you know, he said, did you, he said to Eli, did you call me? No, no. If you go back and you hear the voice calling you again, say, uh, uh, speak, Lord. For your servant hears and obeys. Mm -hmm. That's the Lord calling you. Yes. Come on. That's not that food you ate late at night. No. Come on. <laughs> That's not those. No, no. He's calling you because he wants you to be strong in the relationship. That's right. We don't know what's coming down the pipe. That's right. We don't know what God wants to hand over to you and, and increase you and elevate you in. God said, this may be the time that I'm going to anoint you with that special anointing that you can break out and break through. And this may be something that God wants to show you as he showed me in a vision, mm -hmm. in a dream. And that's being strong in the Lord. Yes. And then to be strong and in the power strong of in the power might. of his might well, see you're yeah. going beyond now just knowing him yes you're beginning to operate like in the him. same power mm -hmm. like him yes oh, like and as comparisons yes and like him jesus told the disciples greater things you're going to do than I have done because yes. I'm going to wait until my father. Yes. But guess what? You're going to do the same and more because you're going to operate in the same power. Yes. That's why they were called Christ the Yes. They acted like Christ. Yes. Come on. They did the same. The thing Jesus says, I do what my father does. Yes. I act like him. So I operate in, in the same power. 
Yes. This is that. Yes. <laughs> this is that. Yes. Why, why were you able to do that? Because I'm operating in the power of his might. It's not my own might. Yes. It's in the power of the one who gave me this authority. That's it. Mm -hmm. And applying mm -hmm. the, um, the authority, using the authority we've been given. It's one thing to have authority. It's a totally different thing to use sure. authority. Mm -hmm. And so uh, establishing that um, relationship with the Lord makes us strong in the Lord. Yes. But then going further than be yes. just strong in the Lord, yes. using the authority, using. using the power, using the name, using the blood, using what he's given as weapons mm -hmm. against the enemy, yes. using the power that we've been given. So not just strong relationship, but strong in power. Remember, Jesus went into the wilderness. He came out. He was full of the spirit. Yeah. He went out in the power oh, of yes. the spirit because he was communing with the father while he was in the wilderness. But he didn't just stop with the communion. He went out in the power. And that's what God wants. Yes, he wants um, stronger in the Lord and in strong in the power mm -hmm. of his mind. And then the power to be strong in it is to demonstrate. Yes. You know, uh, let not your wisdom stand Come on, your faith stand in the wisdom of men. That's right. Paul tells them in Corinth, but rather in the power. Yes. Which means, dunamis, he's telling them, let it stand in the demonstration of the power. It takes faith yes. to do it. And then demonstrating Jesus at Jordan. Yes. You know, he was baptized mm -hmm. under John. Yes. And the Holy Spirit set upon him in the bodily form of a dove. Yes. That was... Uh, Typology or typology yes. for him being baptized. Right. So now he's baptized and then he goes and resists the devil. Mm -hmm. But then once he comes out of there, he defeated the enemy. Yes, he did. Using the word. And now he goes out in the power. Yes. Mm -hmm. Power of the spirit. That's the difference. So that's what causes us to live on the edge, mm -hmm. to be on the cutting edge. Yes. We're not afraid to lay hands on somebody that's got a tough situation. Right. We're not afraid to pray the prayer for God to resurrect somebody from the dead. Yes. We're not afraid to, to do it. That's right. This is the day to do it. Somebody said this is the time to do it. This that's is what time we're to supposed it. to be doing. Yes. In the power of his might. And the world is begging. Yes. The creation is begging yes. for a demonstration. Come yes. on. Faith in the, there must be faith restored. And that's why they're shaking, so that they can see a kingdom that's not unshakable, but yes. a kingdom that's demonstrating, yes. operating in the power of his might, groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the true sons of God who operate in this might. Somebody yes. shout out, stand. Stand. Well, we're going to stand in the power. So we're on the cutting edge. So he says, find it, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on or take unto you, put on the whole of the full armor of God yes. that you may be able to stand against the, the wiles of the devil. That you may be able to stand, that you may be able not just to hold on, yes. but to be able to stand to overcome deal with anything that he comes and brings against you, yes. that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities. And those are higher ranking demons. Yes. Come on. With authority on the Satan himself. Yes. Who seeks to rule regions and control regions and, 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 and cause people to embrace the philosophy of Satan himself yes. to bring depression, oppression, uh, to turn them away from yes. God's word and his will. Yes. Principalities and powers against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in our places. Now, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor. Now, God is calling us to stand. Yes. Now he's telling us what we need to help us stand. Yes. He wouldn't be a good God. That's right. If he told us to stand. That's right. And didn't tell you what you have. Amen. Yes, amen. Now he says, uh, put on, take unto you now. Yes. What is our responsibility? This, this passage is known 
is the scripture for Christian warfare. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the scripture of scriptures for warfare. Yes. To take unto you. We have a risk. It's our responsibility. Yes. To take it to us. Yes. He gives us the armor. He has it here. And it says now it's not here just as a replica of a soldier's armor. Right. It's not just here for you to stare at. You take it unto yourself. Yes. And put it on. Put it on. Just like he says, for the spirit of heaven, heaven is put on the garment of prayer. You got to put it on. Yes. Come on. The now. responsibility is, uh, is ours. ours. God is not going to put it on us. Mm -hmm. He expects us to take the initiative to put it on ourselves. He made it available. He mm -hmm. made it available. Yeah. Very good. Amen. Swear for take on to you, the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand and having done all. We got to separate that. That's a comma after all. That you may be able to withstand. So now to withstand is not that you're just barely holding on. You know, to withstand is to turn him away. Yes. Come on. To withstand is to use the power of God to defeat it and expose and reveal the nature of that attack. Yes. To, that you may be able to withstand. And then, having done all, then that's a comma, that's a rest, right? Yes. <laughs> Once you've done all, what does he say? Having done all to stand. Which means to keep standing. Yes. Come on. Stand therefore. Having. Having your loins girt about with truth. In other words, you're braced for the next attack. Mm -hmm. Now, this is mostly defensive weapons. This armor is mostly defensive. Yes. But there's an offensive part of it. Come on. Uh, there are other scriptures that talk about it. It is not saying that we just we just go out there and pick a fight with the devil. No. Or we go out there and 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 bring on demonic activity a uh, whole scale against ourselves. Right. But we have what we need. Yes. That we're not sitting back and waiting on him to do something. Right. Whenever he does something, we got a sophisticated armor. Yes. That we can handle him. Yes. Amen. Amen. If you notice every army, especially the superpowers as they're so called, they have defensive ballistic missile systems that can destroy missiles in the air yes. that are sent against them. Anti-ballistic missiles. When you send you shoot your missiles, we're going to shoot ours up and take yours out of the air before it has a chance to get to us. Mm -hmm. It is said that a great defense is needed uh, against the offense of another enemy. Mm -hmm. So he says, having done all, keep standing, having your loins girded about with truth. So we're bracing for the next uh, attack. What's going to keep us standing? The first thing he uses, and we're going to find it in, in Psalm 15, the same word, truth. Mm -hmm. Woo! That's right. Truth. Somebody better get this tonight. Truth makes us free. Truth keeps us in line with God's will. Yes. Truth keeps us uh, in the favor of God. Yes. Truth will keep us aligned perfectly and in righteous and right standing with God. When we know the truth, it makes us free. And God looks for truth. He honors truth. Yes. yes. And notice um, here it says your loins girt about with truth. Mm -hmm. Truth here is a belt. It's a belt. And what do we use belts for? To, to hold, hold up. up our pants. Yes. And to keep, uh, breaches. That's right. <laughs> to keep them from falling yes. and exposing mm -hmm. and embarrassing us. Come See, on. when we don't have oh, truth. When we don't have truth, then there's an opportunity for us to be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. But there's an opportunity for us to be exposed. So God said, yeah, if sure. you keep, mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. So God said, you keep on the truth. Yeah. Don't let any type of um, guile, any kind yes. of, um, 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 that's right, where you're trying to, um, cast off some kind of uh, perception of people, make them think a certain thing that is not true. Mm -hmm. Stay with the truth. Make sure you keep truth around you. It's going to protect you. Yes. It's going to protect you it's and keep you, you from being yes. exposed. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's not designed to hurt you. I'm looking for First Peter, you know, two. And yes. Two right quick. I think I have it. Yeah. It's designed to help you. Yes. And we said earlier, you got to own it. Yes. Own the truth. Yes. Own your responsibility. Yes. If I'm not where I need to be, own it. Come on, repent. 
Yes. Do your first works over. Get the help and the strength of yes. the Lord. Come on. Don't compare yourself. Come on. We can spare, we compare from uh, 1 Corinthians 2. Con comparing spiritual words. Yes. With spiritual thoughts. Yes. You're trying to compare yourself to somebody else and you want to be like them. Come on. You follow the word of God. Yes. And a lot of people that are strong and operating in this kind of authority and power. Amen. Operating in the gifts. They pay the price. Yes. They have to come forth in truth. They have to walk in truth. They have yes. to have that intimate relationship with God. But no guile needs to be found in our mouth. Because if, if we don't have the truth operating, then that's when, there's as Paul a, said, we have an opportunity to be made ashamed. That's exactly and right. And we're going to be exposed. Yes. And the enemy seeks. He always seeks the weak link. Yes. He always. Uh, it's interesting that they said that even the COVID disease attacks usually the weakest area of your body. Wow. If you got preconditions in your body, mm -hmm. it's going. That's what disease does a lot of times. It will attack other weak areas in your body sure and begin to bring and bring the body down. The yes. enemy will attack the weaknesses in your life yes. spiritually yes. and then begin to try to bring shipwreck and ruin to your life where you can't fight it off. Right. Come on. That's why we have to build up physically our immune system. Yes. So that we'll have some protection and some resistance. Right. Bible talks about whom we resist steadfastly in the faith. Right. Beware of your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion. Seek it yes. whom he may devour. Amen. But yes. whom we must resist steadfastly. Somebody said we got to resist him. Yes. Steadfastly in the faith. How do I resist it? With my weapons. That's right. With the truth. And truth is the first. Yes. Wow. Number one. The number one thing in your armor. Yes. Is truth. Yes. Truth is very important mm -hmm. to the believer. Very important. I remember in John chapter four, where Jesus is telling the woman at the well uh, that God is seeking for true worshipers, those who will worship him yeah. in spirit and, and in truth. Mm -hmm. And in truth. And very in important. Truth is it come, because if it's not truth, it's false worship. Mm hmm. The heart is not there. Yes. First Peter 2 and 1 says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice yes. and all guile. Yes. Guile has to do with what? We're talking about no guile in your mouth. No. Guile uh, has to do with deception. Deception. Using your words in such a way that you um, make people think a certain thing that you know is not true. It's not true. That is guile. That's trickery. Mm -hmm. And notice the next thing that follows. In all guile. And hypocrisies. Mm -hmm. Hypocrisies. Pretending to be something you're not. Right. To present, pretending to have strength when you know you don't have strength. Right. But guess what? Uh, you you won't pretend too long. The enemy's going to attack that area. Mm, Cross he, you right. he knows where your weaknesses are. He does. Come on. And before you know it, you hollering to everybody. Help. Uh, that's it. Help me. But God has given you the armor, the same armor he's given me. Yes. The same armor that works for me is the armor that will work for you. Yes. But you have to take it unto yourself. That's right. And put it on. Yes. Somebody said, put it on, put it on, put it on. Yes. Put it put on. It on. Put, it put, on. It put it on. Put it on. And then all hypocrisies and envies in all evil speakings. Yes. So let's finish it back in, in the sixth chapter. We're doing good with our time. Almost there. So then Ephesians 6 says then. Uh, here's the other part of the armor. Armor, the things that is endowed with. First thing is truth. Yes. Having your loins girded about with the truth. Yes. Your belt. Yes. The belt that's going to hold. Mm -hmm. And if you, you, if you remember the Roman soldier, you look at today's uh, policeman. They have a belt on, right? Yes. Their gun is attached to that belt. To that belt. The billy club yes. is attached to that belt. Yes. There are uh, attachments on that belt. The mace is there. Mm -hmm. Come on. Uh, is attached to that belt. Mm -hmm. And that belt is not only holding up the clothes, but it's holding up the weapons that they may have to reach for. Mm -hmm. Come on. All right. The pop. That's good. That's good. I'd like to do some more uh, research into that and go more in depth. It's sometime in the future, but having your lawns, yes, gird about with the truth, yes, 
Keep me, keep me honest. What verse am I looking at? And having on the breastplate of righteousness, number mm -hmm. 14. Okay, the second thing that you need to have after you have been strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and uh, having done all, having done all you could do. Everything. Now, that doesn't mean all within your natural understanding. Right. No, having you, having used, having used that power, having used the might of God, still stand having your loins. It has more to it. Mm -hmm. Once you're using the power, there are other things that even the enemy hadn't been hit with yet. Come on. Yes. He think he thinks, well, that was just a moment where you had a just uh uh just a supernatural epiphany or just the way when the Lord came down. No, I got truth in my belt. Yes. I got something else I haven't used on you yet. Yes. Amen. The truth and then your and then it, righteousness the is the plate. next thing of righteousness, yes. Truth, righteousness. Let's go to the next one. Yes. And your feet shod with the preparation <laughs> of the gospel of peace. Yes. Come on, somebody. The gospel, your feet, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Yes. And he's speaking of uh, the salvation and above taking all the shield of faith, which is faith, wherein ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and the helmet of what? Salvation, salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the, the word, word of God. God. Okay, your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Peace, truth. Yes. Yes. And then breastplate righteousness. There was one thing I wanted to say about that. Notice that the breastplate covers the covers heart. The, heart. Mm -hmm. the breastplate covers the heart. After we have the belt of truth on that we don't get exposed in the shame, we now have the uh, breastplate of righteousness that keeps our heart covered, mm -hmm. keeps things from entering into our heart. Remember what it says in Proverbs chapter 4, to guard our heart with all diligence, with all diligence mm -hmm. because diligence. out of it are the issues of life. Yeah. So we have to guard it. And how do we guard it? With righteousness. Mm -hmm. Righteousness guards the heart. Being in right standing with God mm -hmm. and also um, doing uh, the right, uh, doing things God's right way. That's another definition for righteousness. So when we have righteousness working in our life, it keeps our heart protected. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the targets of the enemy. Yes. Uh, I love watching the gladiator type movies. Mm -hmm. where they got the armor on the shields. And, uh, you know, if, if the shield is not there, they're going yes. for their heart. Or yes. uh, even on one movie I saw where the, the captain said, you know, just go for the weakest part of their armor. Mm -hmm. and, and on this movie it says, it's just underneath mm -hmm. the, the, the arm there. If you hit them there, you're going to take them out. Yeah. But the target is your heart. Yes. So the breastplate protecting the heart. Yes. Amen. Because if the enemy can contaminate your heart. Yes. It'll spoil your relationship and ruin your relationship with the Lord and you're subject to be taken out. Yes. So the breastplate, righteousness. Yes. Peace. Feet shot with the preparation of the gospel, the gospel of peace. Of peace. Uh, <laughs> and above all, notice not going beyond that, above all, taking the shield of faith. Hey. Right, because without faith, yes, it's impossible to please the Lord. Yes. You can quench the fire and dots of the enemy. Yes. Taking the shield of faith, wherein you shall be able to quench all, some, all, all the fiery darts of yes. the wicked and take the helmet of salvation. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, he gives us some things that are really offensive, not just defensive. If we're doing these things all the time, we're going to always be in right standing with God. Yes. We're going to always be in a good, healthy position. Mm -hmm. Notice he says in the 18th verse, praying sometimes. Always. Praying always with. All prayer. All prayer. And supplication. And what is always? People of God. Or there's never a time. Mm. That doesn't mean 24 hours a day we walk around praying in the spirit. Thank you. But but every day. Every day. Yes, every day. We're giving God this time every day. Men are always to pray and, and not, not faint. faint. 
Amen. Yes, amen. And there are times when we're going to pray longer than at other times. That's right. But it's a daily thing. This covenant is to be kept every day. That's right. Come on. And no, and no, you don't go on vacation. You don't go on sabbatical from this covenant. No. Amen. I talk to you every day. Every day. Is that yes, right? That's every right. Day. Every day I talk to you. Sometimes, many times a day. Yes. Mm, she got it bad. We, just, <laughs> we got it bad. We call each other. I, I was going to say, don't just put we me got, out there now. We got it good. Thank oh, you. Okay, that. all right. A, on the lunch break. Yes. On breaks. Yes. Hey, hey, Mrs. Deloach. Mr. Deloach. Yes. Hey, Mrs. Deloach. Yes. How is my sweetheart? Yes. Just communing. Mm -hmm. Fellowshipping. Yes. That's building the, um, what we talked about. The person knowing one another. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. So we're finishing now. Praying always. That's going to keep some devils off. Yes. But that's going to keep you in position to take it to the enemy. Amen. Yes. To so be proactive. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Yes. Now notice he says in the spirit. In the spirit. We legitimately pray in the spirit. Jude said, you know, building yourself. Yes. Upon your in your most holy faith, upon your most holy faith, praying in yeah, the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost or in the Spirit. Paul said, What is it then? I will pray with, with the, the Spirit and also pray with my understanding. Yes, I will pray with the Spirit and I will also pray with my understanding. When I'm praying in the uh Spirit, I don't always understand what I'm praying for, but God knows because He's yes. He's 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 uh. He's stirring my spirit to pray. Yes. We pray. We speak not unto men, but unto God. Yes. And God knows sometimes he's having us to, we're, walking, we're doing more. Sometimes when I wake up in the, in the in the bed, praying in tongues and going to bed, I don't know what I'm praying for. Yes. But sometimes it's warfare. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So with all supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Amen. Amen. All right, now let's go quickly. Who who's gonna stay? Who should be able to stay? First Corinthians 16. So we need the armor to stand. We need the armor to stand. But we need some other things to stand also. Mm -hmm. Other things to stand. All right. While you're going to Psalm 15, yes. I want to read this one that could have been our lead in, but it says in um Amen. Uh the, the 16th chapter in the 13th verse of 1 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. Watch ye. Be watchful. Mm -hmm. Stand fast. Be alert. Yes. Stand fast to be on the alert. Amen. Yes. In the faith. Quit ye or quit you or stand erect like men. Be brave like men and be strong. Mm -hmm. That's what we call to be. Be strong. Yes. All right, Psalm 15. Yes. All right, who's going to stand? Who's standing in such an hour as today? But is everybody going under? No. There are these times of here there's going to be a great fall in the way. Yes. There are many falling away, but there are many, many, many who are standing. That's right. And the question is asked, and we're going to close with this, Psalm 15. Lord, take me through it, sweetheart. Lord. Ooh. Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Mm. He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and... I want, I want to slow it up. Let, let the question sink. Mm -hmm. Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who's going to be abiding in your place of your presence? Who shall dwell in thy that holy means hill? live in your holy hill? Who's going to do it? Who's going to be standing? Who's standing in the midst of all these attacks? Who's standing in the midst of all these end time mm -hmm. troubles? Yes. He says, now he's going to tell us who. He who. He that walketh uprightly, number one. First one is upright. You got to walk in right position. Yes. Uprightness. That's That means in right standing with God. Come yes. on. And worketh righteousness, number two. You got to work works of righteousness. What are some works of righteousness? Uh, works, you know, what they're works of, of the church. Some people are doing the work, uh, church work. 
um, working righteousness is also obeying the scripture. Obeying the scripture. Um, carrying out every command that God gives mm -hmm. you is working righteousness. Mm -hmm. um, the word talks about how he gave them the commandments for righteousness. So as we're staying with the commandments, as mm -hmm. we're staying doing, doing what, what the word of God says, mm -hmm. we are working righteousness. We're doing them. It's you his know, right way of doing things. The right way. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, all these things will be added to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Uh, and doing and working uh, righteousness. What did Jesus do in working righteousness? The, the apostles worked in righteousness. The prophets established righteousness in pagan areas. They, manif they manifested the power of God wherever they went. Mm -hmm. And the one thing about those of us who have this armor on, we carry the presence of God everywhere we are. Yes. Amen. Uh, healing takes place. The atmosphere is changed because we're working righteousness. Mm -hmm. And guess what? What do people see when they see us? Do they see Christ? Amen. Righteousness shows up when we show up. Mm -hmm. And we're working righteousness, loving on people and getting results. Amen. Being willing and, and able to pray to turn situations around in our lives. All right. And he that works righteousness. And speaketh the truth in his heart, number three. That word truth showed up a little while ago, didn't it? Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. The armor. The first thing the armor has is truth in it. Amen. Yes. And he who works the truth. Speaketh the truth. Speaketh the truth in, in his, his heart. heart. Yes. Yes, indeed. So um, continue with the fourth one. Yes. He that backbiteth not with his tongue. These are the people who are going to be standing. These are people who are going to be standing in the, on God's presence. And yes. And backbiteth not. You, you should use your tongue only to, to glorify God. Amen. And to praise the Lord. Not speaking of someone, you know, uh, unfavorably. Who's you? You know they're not in your presence. You're not in their presence. Mm -hmm. He that back by the not that's who's gonna stand. Come on. Nor doeth evil to his neighbor. Yes. Number six. Nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. Mm -hmm. No reproach. Number seven. You're, you're gonna preach that one for me. You're gonna exegete that one. Oh. Now bring it up a reproach. Well, uh, not uh, take it up a reproach yeah. or to um, cause uh, put a slur on others to cause separation um, with other people. See, one thing I have noticed that when we talk about the uh, root of bitterness, when people have been offended, if you're not careful, the root of bitterness can take root. And then it, what the word says is that it. Uh, uh, shows up, it rises up, and it begins to do what? Defile many. many others, right? and, and so the when you have a root of bitterness, one thing that will happen is you want to share your offense with other people to get other people to look at that one person you have a problem with in a negative way. That is bringing a reproach upon, um, upon your neighbor rather than having your, uh, going to your neighbor directly. And then uh, what does the word says? You which are spiritual, go restore such a one. Or if, uh, if any man has, yeah, if, if, mm -hmm. if any man has an ought with his brother, it didn't say go and take up a reproach with uh, other people mm -hmm. against the neighbor. It says yeah. that we're to go to yeah. him. And that's the problem. Even that goes back to bite, backbiting. Many times Satan wants to use an offense not to uh, correct something that's been happening. But what happens is they want to um, use that one offense to go and spread negativity yes. to other people rather than getting it right with yeah. that one person. So therefore, instead of being used of God and being um, reconciled to your brother, Satan wants to use it to bring further division. We have to be mindful that we can't stand in the presence of God. Right. If we're doing that, Take we have to go. Yeah. That's right. We yeah. got to go and get it right with your brother. Somebody put that out there. Get it right with your brother. Right with your brother, don't take up a reproach. Don't even take up their offense. That's it. Because when we know, you know, we take up somebody's offense and you don't even know the details. Oh, yes. You're not involved because that's right. a backbite and you're talking against someone. You know, are you willing to say what you said about that person 
if that person is brought into the council and conference table, all right, come on, what you know, that's that's how you, you have conflict resolution. That's right. And when there's rumors out there, okay, let's get that person. Yes. And as a leader, you know, I've done that. Let's get that person and that's bring right. them here to the table. That's right. And see if uh, you know you will say the same thing. Yes. In that person's face. All parties involved. All parties. Look at what the scripture says in yes. Psalm one. Blessed. That's empowered. Yes. You know, to prosper. That's right. Happy. Fortunate. Yes. Is the man that walketh not in the counsel of ungodly? Because when you begin to take up a reproach and, and backbite with your mouth and scorn, you are in ungodly counsel. Yes. Blessed is the man who that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, yes. nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Yes. It's the word. Come on, it's the law. Mm -hmm. Come on, yes. what should say? It's Jesus, 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 yes. Sister Jerry. You know what I'm talking about. It's Jesus in the morning. It's Jesus in the noonday. It's Jesus in the evening. Jesus when the sun go down. Mm -hmm. Come on, uh, we're talking about him. So then our law is, our delight is in the law of the law. Lord, and in his law, does he meditate day and night? And I think in Proverbs, he speaks about how that we must not scorn. Mm -hmm. Because a little bird, bird of prey Yes. Will carry your words. words. Oh, yes. How do they carry them in the air. Yes. Words have power. Oh, yes, they do. They're suggestive. Yes. And words travel. Oh, yes, they do. Is that right? That's right. All right. So we're finishing up now. He that. Back by biteth not with his tongue, with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, mm -hmm. in whose hot eyes a vile person is contemned or hated, or hated. but he honoreth them mm -hmm. that he fear the Lord. That fear the Lord. He that a swear to his own hurt and changeth not. I notice it says that the person that stands in the presence of the Lord honors the one. Who fears the Lord? Yes, they have a respect for Mutual people. Honor. Yes, they have a respect for other people who also fear the Lord. Yes. They honor them, and so and it says, and he that swear to his own hurt. Mm -hmm. What I said, I'm not gonna. It's not gonna go unsaid. Not I'm not gonna said. go back on it mm -hmm. just because it's not gonna cause me to be uncomfortable now that I put it out there or. Uh, I may get in trouble because I said it. I'm yeah. not going to go back on my words. I'm going to stand with what I said, even if I have to uh, go to jail. Notice what happened with Daniel. Mm -hmm. Daniel got put in the lion's den. Why? Because he was doing what God told him to do. He was praying when they it was an edict out that they were not to pray to the God of Israel. And they were to bow only to Baal. Or uh, to, to the God, yes, to yes. Nebuchadnezzar. Yes. Thank now you. Before the uh, statue, yes, that he made of himself. That's right. And Daniel and the Hebrew. Remember what the Hebrew children said? You know, we will not bow. Yes, we will not bow to another god. Yes, we will have no other god but you. He took me back on those. Yes, Woo! but notice they swore to their own hurt, mm. got cast into the fire. But look at what, what God did. We, he said. They said, if it be thou, O king, this is how they talk to you. Yes. You know, our God whom we serve, it serves able to deliver us. He's able to deliver. But if not, we know he's able. Yes. Other, we're willing to die here. Yes. We're not, if we die, we're not thinking that God let us down or he That's wasn't right. able. He's able. He's able. In other words, that translates to me, there must have been some greater purpose in us dying. Yes. Than uh, us living through this. Yes. But they... In terms of that way, yes, they put it out there because yes. we're not going to unsay what the word is said. That's right. We're going to stand. Here's that yes. word stand now. We're going to stand on yes. what, even if it means us being publicly ridiculed. Yes. The apostle Paul said it like this. He says, we went through two months. Yes. We went through all kinds of trouble, mm -hmm. suffered hunger, suffered lack, suffered need. But we, come on, we would not put any confidence mm -hmm. in ourselves because we had the sentence yes. of the pronouncement of death within us.
that we should not trust in ourselves. That's right. But rather in the word of God. Yes. In other words, we're going to stand. Yes. We may be gazing stocks. Yes. People may have heard us and say what they said to Peter. Where is the promise of his coming? Y'all been yes. preaching that, that he's coming back. Now, don't give some men, uh, you know, don't don't consider the word. Of, but he says, God don't count. Uh, as some men count slackness, God don't count it as you do. His word is going to come true. Yes. So we're going to swear mm -hmm. to our own hurt. Yes. Who swears? God. God swore mm -hmm. when he couldn't find no greater to swear about. Yes. He swore to Abraham. Yeah. He said, I swear, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. But he says here, the, the, the writer says, David says, we're going to swear to our own hurt. Who's going to stand? Those who swear to them on her change now. Yes. This is God's word, and I'm standing on it. Right. Come on. Yes. And is that done? Is that all the conditions for standing? He that put it not out his money to usury. What a list. Nor take it reward against the innocent. No, you know, come on. You, you got to explain what the word usury means. So usury is interest. interest. Now I work in accounting. Yes. And so usury is you putting your money out or you allowing people, or you lending your money and charging interest mm -hmm. on the money that you lend out. I never saw when it says in Deuteronomy that he would make us the lender. It didn't say with interest. No. It didn't say with never, interest. Never, never, never. He said make you the lender and not the borrower. Mm -hmm. And so this is something God says, um, we're not to take advantage of people. And this is something we're to do out of uh, the goodness of our heart, mm -hmm. basically. Scripture says that, that, that the wicked borrow and pay it not again. Mm -hmm. But the righteous, uh, they're, they're, they're liberal and they get. Come on, even when people don't pay you back, you still, it's like you write it off. Yes. <laughs> you yes. write it off as a gift. Yes. Come on, somebody. Isn't that good? That's good. Mm -hmm. Nor taketh reward against the innocent. Bribes. Mm -hmm. Against innocent people. Um, this That person that does that will not stand in the presence of the Lord. And it says, after that, he that doeth oh, these things God. shall never be moved. They're going to stand. They will be still standing. They'll still, I'm still standing. Yes. Let's go back and rehearse the number of those things without reading them all over just to explain them. So these, he, are, these are the requirements for standing according to Psalm 15. Yes. And that's a whole lot more concerning standing. Amen. So he that does what? The number one thing? Number one, walk it upright. Upright, work with righteousness, that's two. Yeah. Um, speaks the truth in his heart. Speaks the truth in his heart. Backbiteth not with his tongue. Backbiteth not with his tongue. That's four. Nor doeth evil to his neighbor. Number five, don't do evil to your neighbor. Nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. Nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor to give his fingers right to feel his Okay. Or uh, six. In whose eyes a vile person, I think that goes with um, well, that's with the number, number six. six right. Um, uh, he, uh, he honored them that fear the Lord. The person that honors yeah, I think that's attached to you, right? No. Uh, but okay. he honoreth them that feared the Lord. Um, or yes, attached to number six? Yes. Okay, yes, mm -hmm. you're right. And then um, he that swears to his own hurt. Swear, number seven. Yes. This is the person that's going to stand. Swears to his own hurt. And changes and not. And not. That means you have ultimate confidence in the word of God. And you're doing it. That's what's going to keep you standing. Yes. Having your loins girded about with truth. Yes. He said, the armor, you stand on that. Come on. Yes. He that put it not out of money to usury. He, he goes into the business aspects of our dealings. Yes. Isn't that something? Yes. Oh. Nor taketh reward against the innocent. Mm -hmm. That's not. He that doeth these things shall not never be moved. Isn't it amazing how God deals in, in the number nine? Yeah, I'm about to say it. And number nine means fruit. Yes, there are nine fruits fruitful, of the spirit, nine, nine uh, spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. So then you're fruitful in your standing. Mm -hmm. That's evidence yes. of who you are. That's good. We're done. Amen. Amen. And we want now to just give you an opportunity to give. Amen. Uh, because she was talking about it earlier when you partner. Guess what? It becomes mutual blessings. Yes. Shared blessings. Yes. Not only are we being blessed. Um, because you sold into the anointing, but it becomes shared blessing because God gives you 
The blessing is upon that anointed man and woman of God. Amen. Yes. Something is released every time we sow. Um, look at what happened with the widow woman uh, who had the child during the famine when she sowed to the prophet. Mm -hmm. uh, even it was something that hurt her because it was her cake that I believe that she sowed. Um, she sowed that and how look how God maintained her family during the famine. Yes. Anytime, look at what he told um, uh, uh, the son, a Isaac. I was going to say the son of Abraham. Isaac, he's, he sowed in a dry in, land, in that land. In that land that had been abandoned because there was drought. There had been famine there, but he sowed. Yes. And in his sowing, he had he received a harvest. We cannot receive a harvest unless we sow. This is how God sets it up. In, in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Even farmers understand it, they can't go out looking for a harvest unless they put some seed in the ground. That's exactly right. And so that's what we do. And according to the word of God, there will always be seed, seed time, and harvest. Seed, time, harvest. Yes. Mm -hmm. Notice, and in the word it says seed time. Mm -hmm. There's not even a break between right. seed and time. Mm -hmm. It's seed time. It's sowing mm -hmm. and, and receiving. Sowing and receiving. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this is a, a great opportunity. Um, this is seed time now. Great opportunity sure. for you to sow. And then we will believe with you that you will get the harvest that you are a believing God We're for. We're going to be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the soil is indeed rich. We, we truly we believe, believe that. The soil is good and conducive. Yes. For blessings spiritually. Yes. Come on. And uh Blessing your home in many other ways. Yes. But spiritual food you eat them today. Yes. That causes your spirit, man, to be made strong. Amen. Stronger. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Well, we just want to thank you for joining us on tonight. And we pray that you would have a blessed week. Yes. That you would be strong in the Lord and, and in, in the, the power, power of, of his, his might. Yes.